Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video I'd like to discuss my turnkey solution for Warp 9's Ethernet Smooth Stepper design. And many of you already know, the Smooth Stepper has been on the market since virtually day one, so I'm not going to elaborate too much on the settings of the unit, simply because if you require information, just Google Ethernet Smooth Stepper, and abundance of it will come up. Um, what I do want to do is go over the logistics of this design, um, but before I do, I want to cover what this unit basically does for any guy that's just getting involved with CNC automation. So overall, um, if you're running a system with a DB25 uh, actual breakout board where the breakout board again sends the step and direction signals over to your steppers or servos that parallel port cable connects that board to the PC which is sending those signals you would replace that cable with this connector right here which is you can see the 25 pins here it just plugs right in this ribbon cable then sends and converts those signals to this little circuit board here and it converts them over to Ethernet format now what you would be able to do is also take a gecko drive g540 and which again also uses and stock configuration a parallel port cable replace that cable with this plug it in and you convert that drive once again over to Ethernet format and what does that mean well briefly it simply means that you are no longer obligated to use Mach 3 with Windows XP 32-bit or Microsoft uh, Vista 32-bit. Both operating systems are no longer supported by Microsoft and guys when I say that I still have clients that'll say you know what I love Microsoft uh, XP and I'm gonna stay with that well I always say God bless you guys if you can work with it and your system stable then absolutely stay with it but overall it's always more uh, productive I find to always go with the latest operating systems that are fully supported by Microsoft because if you require a driver or you require support it's there I always try to keep that available because I know that sometimes budget is you know always the driving factor but always think about that support is imperative to you guys uh, actually being successful over the long term now when you actually use this system and like I said, you no longer are obligated to use Mach 3 with those operating systems. That opens the door to using um, a laptop, a desktop. A desktop would require a dedicated Ethernet source. Um, you would require a, a wireless card so that you'll be able to go online because, again, if it's using Ethernet, it would be hardwired in. Um, overall, very, very simple platform, but Windows 7 and Windows 10, or I should say Windows 7 through Windows 10, you'll be able to use those operating systems as well in any format. That means 32-bit operating system or 64-bit. So again, uh, extensive overhaul, so to speak, as far as um, system compatibility. Um, that being said, this unit also has some unique features. If you decided uh, going between um, USB and Ethernet because again I always get a question on you know what's the biggest difference between the two you know Ethernet I hear is so great and honestly as far as signals go if your system is built correctly and we make sure that your PC does not have a floating ground and we're using double shielded cables and shielded cables where required and of course your chassis is grounded as well as your controller USB system works absolutely fine okay that same configuration I just discussed would have to be the same for this there is no difference in that the main thing here is what you choose and what's required for your system and that's what I always tell you guys do don't spend more than you have to on myths spend what you have to on what's required to give you the same essential performance paying more for something doesn't always mean it's better it just simply means that you know you may be living up to the status quo of what you're reading online and that's what I try to do is separate the BS from what's actually factual so again it's totally up to you but what this device does offer in comparison to a UC100 is a UC100 allows only for 15 foot of actual cable support so within 15 foot range of your system you're fine if you require to have a computer inside per se let's say a office and you want to have outside of course in the shop the table then optimally if you want to control that system from your office this is the way to go because you'll have up to a hundred foot of cable run to actually control the system okay ethernet's a more stable platform as far as signals so again you can definitely see that's very beneficial if you're running a shop uh, another very unique feature is the inputs okay you can see this unit has input one input two and input three back here um, I'm gonna discuss that at the end but let's go over right now exactly what we've got here in the kit platform okay um, like I've stated uh, many vendors have released their own versions uh, this platform without a doubt 
Um, I've really covered all the bases because if you even review Warp 9 site, you're going to review really quickly that they do discuss the possibility for EMI penetration. They do tell you to, you know, assemble your system with precaution. And again, that's what we've done here. First thing I want to discuss, um, because I'm going to answer 98% of the questions I receive every day, which is typically what cables, what power supply, what enclosure, how do I mount it? Um, first thing is our enclosure. We've got a 6061 milled enclosure here. It's held together with 630 second screws and some thumb nuts. And why I chose that is so you guys can service your own unit yourself. You can see exactly how this platform is set up. The board simply slips into place. We have our clamshell configuration right here. And you just tighten down your screws once again with our nylon washers so we don't mar our anodized red finish and you're golden. Okay, if you had to change a board out, it's seconds. There's no longer, you know, you're not dealing with all kinds of um, soldered leads and whatnot. A lot of guys are afraid of that. I wanted to make this as simple a platform as possible. That being said, uh, when we use a metal enclosure, we are naturally getting that Faraday cage effect, which is mandatory on anything that's electronic, especially, especially sensitive electronics like this. Um, so that naturally shields the unit somewhat on top of what we do with our accessories. Once again, we already have our EMI filter on our DB25 cable. And then coming over here for our power supply, that's the next unit I always get asked about. Uh, many of you see the power supplies on the market. They're typically just a plug unit. And this unit actually has a power switch. And of course, we have our TDK ferrite, which once again filters uh, any EMI coming from this actual power supply. So you're golden there. Plug simply plugs into the side of the unit and you've got a plug and play device. Now, of course, I went with a, a power supply with the on off switch. And again, guys, common sense prevails. You wouldn't plug in your TV with it on. And the main reason you wouldn't is because it's going to get a surge. Well, that's just logical on anything. And think of the terms of the fact that these boards just by themselves are like $150. Why would you do that? I mean, with with this, and this is a sensitive piece of electronics, I, I just don't understand that. And a lot of guys don't, I mean, I get questioned on it a lot, but they don't realize the importance. Why actually have the unit take a shock that it does not need? We do not need a surge like that. I do get questions all the time as well on, can I just connect the unit to a PC's, uh, like a USB input on a laptop or whatnot? That is not really uh, best practice. If you go on uh, Warp9's website, they will explain that. Uh, they do request a unit using a segregated power supply. And again, I went with a wall wart unit because again, it stabilizes the system in the sense that you have a subsystem. You actually have your controller and then you're gonna have your controller. And when I say your controller to your controller, we have our Ethernet controller, which is dispersing our signals. And we also have our stepper controller, which is actually holding our drives and the electronics. That allows for a lot of different um, neat features in the sense if you have to troubleshoot, you can disconnect this, hook up a standard parallel port cable and test out your system by itself. You could also test this unit by itself and also you're not subjecting this unit to EMI. If you mount this in the same enclosure, as your actual electronics and that enclosure is metal which 98 percent of them are you're trapping all that emi right around this circuit board and i don't understand um, there's a lot of information on this once again on um, warp 9 site and that is not best practice you should always have anything that's dealing with signals isolated and in this case we have our subsystem and we're good to go so again we have our enclosure Got our um, filtered power supply here. Once again, pulling from the wall so we know that we're never gonna have a fluctuation in power. The next step is the cable. What cable to use for communication? This is a CAT7, okay, double shielded ethernet cable with gold plated connectors, okay? This is the heart of the system, guys. I mean, when you're sending, the actual step and direction signals, you wanna make sure nothing has the possibility for corruption. That's what we want. And that's exactly what we've done here. You know, a lot of the argument online has always been that ethernet is such a, such a, um, a stable connection. You don't have to worry about, you know, certain things. I see a lot of guys just using, you know, regular cables and whatnot. All the bases have been covered to offer the most stable platform. You always should be using double shielded cables for communication. We always should be using a filtered power supply. And once again, filtering our actual connectors going into the 540 so that, or I should say your breakout board, to make sure that everything is stabilized, okay? That's the best way to do it. Now, that being said, um, 
the last thing I want to discuss is advanced features of this unit because many of you have asked me, you know, how do I get a five axis system? What's the easiest, most economical platform to do five axis? Um, I also get another question of how um, does this compare to Centroid's version of it, which is Centroid's Acorn CNC. Many questions come in on that. Um, Centroid's version is essentially the same unit. They basically copied it and just basically put their proprietary motion control software with it. Many guys fail to realize that their motion control software is free, and they always say it's free, but what they don't actually disclose is that it's limited. You have to read the small print, guys. It's limited in the fact of how much deco can be produced unless you go with their professional versions in which you pay for. And I believe there's two steps of their software, so you can pay for it in different formats. I think it's like advanced and pro. Um, they also charge $90 an hour for support unless you're going through their form. Read all of the proprietary information before you jump. I always say, you know, look before you leap because once you get involved proprietary and not open source hardware, you're under their thumb to doing anything with that system. So I can't emphasize that enough. Be careful. Um, I get asked in comparison all the time, what's the difference, Smooth Stepper or Acorn? And Smooth Stepper has been on the market forever. I mean, first of all, just a maturity factor should be a huge thumbs up for you because you know massive amounts of support are available. Not only that, it's, it's manufactured in the U.S. I don't know where the Centroid one is. I'm assuming it's also manufactured in the U.S. Um, but I have heard, again, the extensive stories about support on how they do their proprietary support. So please just be careful and be aware of that, whatever one you do decide to go with. The other factor is if you purchase this unit and you use Mach 3, you have all of the availability features of Mach 3. Okay, so the proprietary software that's limited with Centroid, <clears throat> you don't have. And when you factor in the additional cost of the Centroid software to get all the extensive features, Mach 3 with this unit is usually cheaper. And again, the maturity factor of support being available, it's hard to weigh that, you know. So just be aware of what's actually going on there. Okay, so that basically covers that. But one of the Again, the most advanced features of this system, and again, where this actually drove me to do this as well, because this is a huge driving factor in the sense that five axis systems are becoming more prominent, and I want to make a five axis kit that is available to the end user to where you guys are able to build it very quickly and very cheaply. I mean, much, much cheaper than dealing with all the wiring and whatnot. You can see we have input one, input two, and input three. If you wanted to, or if you wanted to expand, I should say, because I always get asked the question, you know, how do I expand my four axis G540 system to support five axis? Well, you can buy an individual breakout board, one single drive, and wire that in into input two. Okay, you could actually use input two and wire that in and go from there. Another super easy way to go. Now, I get asked that question in terms of finance, which is cheaper. Do I buy the individual drive breakout board, then I have to hook that up to the power supply? If you're okay and tech savvy and are okay in doing that, you can definitely do that on input two here, and that would give you your five axis system. Another way to do it would be to buy two G540s, and that would give you essentially the ability to run two in tandem. Okay, so running two units in parallel gives you essentially eight axes of motion. Pending, Mach 3 would support it, which it doesn't. It only supports up to six axes. That being said, you would have basically two axes to spare, and you'd also have up to six axes available. Well, what else does that give you? It gives you the availability to not only run uh, a two axis system, a three axis system, a four axis system, a five axis system, or two individual four axis systems. Now, if you ran two individual four axis systems where you would have one drive controlling one robot and another drive controlling another robot, you would require uh, either another ESS, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend unless you require the distance or you just were happy with just you know going that route. You could actually use a UC100 on one and then go with the ESS on the other and run the two individual systems. When you do decide, let's say your shop also on, on top of the two individual systems it had, uh, you decided to have a five axis robot, you could actually hook the two drives together and run a five axis system. So again, this unit is so powerful with the expansion capabilities. That's what really drives that driving force as far as how you can expand at will 
and more or less never be pigeonholed, so to speak, as far as the capability of the system. Now, you can also, like I said, naturally hook up a breakout board, one individual uh, G251 drive, so to speak, and you would have a five axis system that way as well. So again, understanding how the inputs work, it's amazing. You could, in terms, I mean, it's just amazing that this is so cheap in comparison to doing that than, than really justifying all the labor and time that you're gonna invest if you're doing the wiring and doing the controller build and all that. G540, you need three connections and you're set to go. Now, another super huge feature. If you use two G540s, you're doubling the available inputs and outputs. G540 has two outputs and four inputs. You are essentially getting eight inputs and also four outputs because you're using two of its breakout boards in the drive itself. So again, super expansion capabilities, uh, super functionality, super ease of changing, uh, or I should say super ease of servicing if required, and that's what we're going for, simplicity, accuracy and again that uh, the, the all-around um, support in the fact that number one both drives would come with Gecko's three-year warranty um, uh, the Mar uh, Warp 9 does actually warranty their units I believe for a year as well and again they're fully supported in the US I wanted to do a package where again you're getting the support you require you're getting that peace of mind and the stability is there and I think in this package we've covered that is this package for everybody absolutely not and the main reason it isn't is because the price is involved this is the most uh, expensive controller conversion there is I mean the smooth steppers without a doubt um, it offers the most versatility but you're also paying for it so you have to justify that I don't recommend it for every system but I certainly recommend it for certain units especially clients that are looking for expansion I get a lot of clients that say you know today I want to start with one machine but tomorrow I may, may go with five axis well this is your your buddy here now keep in mind with a five axis system guys if you go five axis you're gonna require five axis software believe it or not the five axis software typically costs way more than the hardware itself if you go with Bobcat five axis you're looking at I believe it's like uh, 14 or fifteen thousand dollars which to me is just absolutely crazy um, there are other versions on the market um, I'm trying to think of the name, but I actually did a video on it. If you guys look in my descriptions, just search my videos, you'll find it. Uh, but uh, overall, 5-axis software is the most expensive software, once again, because the uh, manufacturer of the software realized the capability. But you will have that option. Many of you want 5-axis for other operations, you know. Um, I have had clients do painting machines, uh, all kinds of stuff, uh, different uh, diversified printing options where um, they may want an extended drive, again, 6-axis is there you've got a lot of motion capability with that and again at a very very low price threshold considering this so again I hope this kit it has answered a lot of your questions uh, once again if you're researching the design check it out go on um, Warp 9's website I try to keep everything as transparent as possible I want us all to be on the same page um, again pull no punches you guys know and and actually educate you as much as I possibly can and you guys can check it out validate the information that's what I'm expecting and again if you have any questions message me directly at storm2313 at gmail.com you can also message me again at my e-dealer direct store on eBay um, my subscribers are growing dramatically guys I love that I love you and again I'll keep the videos coming I'll keep the products coming anything I can do to um, you know help you guys stabilize make the money you need to make uh, that's what we're here to do you know we're here to grow together and that's that's essentially it so again guys thank you all I wish you all a very great uh, I should say an excellent um, Memorial Day weekend have fun be safe take care